what is going on. Today, we're going to talk about the books and courses I took to become successful, full list and resources. I'm going to go over the information that I came across when I was in the boarding house. When I was in the boarding house, that was a very pivotal and foundational period of my life when I was in the boarding house. That was where a lot of these, the success mindset came before the success. This is one of the reasons that I'm on the whole tips. This is one of the reasons I say the things I say, that if you have a negative mindset or you have a mind full of doubt, worry, negative thoughts, you're not going to be successful. You're just not. One of the things that happened was I remember I had had Earl Nightingale and the power of your subconscious mind. I had those about six months when I got laid off at Powertail. And after listening to this information over and over and over again and reading the book several times, it, it got into my mental. I remember telling the guy calmly, I was upset that they were letting me go, but I was calm about the situation. And understand, I didn't have any money in the bank. I went back to my room, created Scheme Incorporated, sat down and wrote out a detailed plan on how to get a job that I didn't have a reference for because I knew that I needed a job to fund the things I wanted to do in the future. See, this is why, you know, there's so many people quit your job, quit your job, quit your job. Really? I've never advised that. I feel that you should leverage your job income and connections and resources to benefit you. That's where I think you should be. All right, so what I'm going to do is take you along the journey, step by step, and this is first. You want to get the power of your subconscious mind, Dr. Joseph E. Murray. You want to get this book, you want to inhale it two or three times. This right here, because this is the order. I got this book, and I don't even remember how or what even led me to this book. I just remember ending up with it, and it was, you know, and I can't remember if it was this or Lead the Field, but they both were around the same time. Reading this book, this is why I don't have negative self-talk. It will talk about the power of your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is like a director of your life. And you must be careful what you put in into your subconscious mind. You must be careful how you program your subconscious mind. Because there, there's people who are intentionally programming their subconscious mind with success. And there are other people whose sub subconscious mind is being programmed by social media, uh, what you know, Fifth Avenue. So you know, they 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 they're not in a, a situation of intentional self study and intentional programming. They're being programmed, and you you can hear these people because you know, a lot of times they'll use certain type of talking points to let you know that they've been indoctrinated, and they haven't been able to come up with anything of their own. But this is one of the first books that I got. Uh, one of the things I learned was everything is a choice. This book will teach you everything is a choice. You're not going to just, you know, the, there's a choice to start a business. There's a choice not to start a business. Either way you look at it, it's a choice. And one of the things that this was very instrumental into me, for me, was it helped me rearrange my thinking. I had a loser's mentality. I used to think of negative stuff all the time. 
this isn't going to work. This is a scam. They're just trying to get money. It opened up my mind to the possibilities of transformation because I developed a success mindset many months before the success came. You're not going to have success before you have the success mindset. It's just not going to happen. And th this is one of the things that you should be aware of. And this is one of the things that you should take to heart. Get this book, go over it five or 10 times and dive into the power of your subconscious mind. It's going to be killer in what you're going to do. It's going to be substantial in how you move forward in life. All right, so we're going to get to the next one, which I brought up several times, and it's lead to feel. Lead to feel is a personal psychology. Because as I was putting this together, I was starting to think about it. Lead to feel gives you principles and guidelines on how to live your life. It's a blueprint on how to be successful. Lead to feel power with the power of your subconscious mind will open up your mind and there's things you have to do. Lead to, give, lead to feel gives you uh, tasks, the things that you should do, assignments, and it wakes you up because I remember I was living in the West End and I was listening to Earl Nightingale's Lead to Feel and he said something that about poor neighborhoods, how poor neighborhoods where people are unemployed and everyone's home, the, they're they're just trashed. And I was walking and that came to me and I was just like, there ain't nothing but trash around here. These people do not have personal pride. They don't care about their neighborhood. Yet you go to a well-to-do neighborhood where people are always working, the lawns are manicured, it looks nice, it's safe, it's clean. And I was just like, dang. And this was something Earl Nightingale talked about in the 40s or the 50s which lets you know human nature hasn't uh, changed. Once again, I grew up in a poor neighborhood that had a high level of personal pride. And, you know, people kept their yards up. They kept their grass cut. They, from these poor people, many successful people came because of that personal pride. But this is, you know, let's just say the second thing I got. I started off with the cassettes, and then I got the um, CDs later because I used this for years and currently you can get all right you can get the CDs oh this is sealed is it sealed oh man you know you're gonna have to move quick because there's not that many and here's some other stuff you can get by Earl Nightingale as a man think if then Think and Grow Rich, that's by Napoleon Hill. I got more from Earl Nightingale than, think, than I got from Think and Grow Rich. I remember reading that book as a kid. I can't remember much about it, but I got more juice from Earl Nightingale. I got a lot more juice from Earl Nightingale. So you, you're going to have to do some stock shopping around, looking, you know, I recommend the CDs, you know, because um, just Earl has this great voice. It's very inspiring. But that's the second thing that I got. Oh, Jam, you recently purchased this book. It's awesome. Yes, it is, man. Yes, it is. LVMCD, one note about your subconscious. Your subconscious mind is wide open when you're in deep REM sleep. So make sure to turn off your television or night or any. You know, that's a very good point. For many years, I did not have a television in my bedroom. I never fell asleep listening to the television because they call it television programming for a reason. Oh, lead the field is unlawful? Okay, cool. Well, you know, you know where to get it. I never, 
you know, until recently, I never had a television in the bedroom. You know, my opinion, the, be the bedroom was for sleeping or making love. That was the only two purposes of the bedroom, not watching television. And this is a good point LVMCD has put out, <clears throat> that you want to guard your subconscious mind. You definitely want to guard that. And this is one of the things that I learned. All right, so, and this one is kind of a shocker. And this, this is something else. I got unlimited power by Tony Robbins. Uh, let's see. This one, this book right here. I got a book. Oh, they can get, you can get a CD. Uh, you know, he talked about frames. He talked about uh, modeling, a lot of stuff. This was the third resource that I used to become successful. And this all was like, you know, 1999. Uh, you know, he had many good points because this is the personal university that I used to become successful. Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field. Dr. Joseph E. Murray, Power of Subconscious Mind, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. And I, the thing that I got from Tony Robbins was the power of modeling. I would see successful people and I would model their behavior without fully understanding why they did what they did and I would get comparable results. This really helped with the dating life. This, this was a tremendous thing with the dating life. I mean, it, it was amazing. And this is another thing I, I got. The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. I got the cassettes. I listened to those. This is what I was listening to when I was at Renegrade. This is what I was listening to when I was at Business Environments. I would just put them in the CD player. I think I had cassettes for him. And this is when they still made cars with cassette players. And I would just put that in there and I would listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So this is a good thing that you could pick up. And apparently it's here on YouTube. Now, another thing that you should get into is influence the psychology of persuasion. Uh, this is by Robert Cardati. This is relatively recent. Uh, this is a book that I've read. But <clears throat> there's some other stuff that I read. You start reading books about copywriting, Ogilvy, advertising. Because, you know, part of this thing is unlimited power, Sub power of subconscious mind, lead to, this gets your mind right. So one of the things that I did was get my mental environment straight. And then all of these other things that came after were able to get where they needed to get mentally because once again, if you have a bad mindset, none of this stuff's not gonna work. You can read all these books and get no, research, no, no results. Uh, many, you know, the bad mindset is, I can't do it, uh, it's too hard, this isn't going to work, why am I doing, you know, bad mindset is killer. A bad mindset will jack up so many of the things that's happening. Asia J. Poole, Napoleon Hill is more general thought, Earl Nightingale is more actual process. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. AKW Beats, no TV in my bedroom for the last three years. Yep, uh, you know, I don't even understand how people go to sleep with the television on. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Max, man. Yeah, all right, stand the man. LVMCD, you can you can record and create your own reserve subliminals for your subconscious mind. The conscious mind blocks anything that it understand, but it reverses we get to your subconscious mind. Uh, Gary Halbert, the boron leathers. That's something I came in across later. 
See, what I'm giving you is the stuff that was pivotal and foundational in 1999, because I came across all of this stuff in 1999. That was the watershed year for me. So let's continue on. All right. Unlimited power. I really started getting into psychology when I got on YouTube. I really did not do a lot of reading about psychology, but Ogilvy on advertising, and you will understand a lot of these older books are still very powerful and effective to this day. And here's something, I used to listen to talk radio, and this one may be kind of hard to find. A verbal advantage. How many of you know the story of Rush Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh did not go graduate college. He's a college dropout. But Rush Limbaugh had such an amazing command of the English language. His verbal ability, and they used to advertise verbal advantage on this show, was the reason, you know, because the thing is, the more words you know, the more people you can communicate with. You know, uh, this is part of hood culture, uh, this sloppy language, this lazy language, uh, not learning words, not knowing the meaning of words, not knowing how to speak. This is one of the reasons that many young black people are not as successful as they could be because they don't know how to speak. So I went ahead and got a copy of Verbal Advantage and I mean, instantly, I started to know the difference that people related differently to me. They looked at me differently. They started telling me secrets. You know, verbal advantage. Find it. Go through it. It will change your life. Because I forget the numbers, like how many words a person knows because of educational classification. But my vocabulary is well beyond my formal education. And it came in handy when talking to clients and customers. It it was such a powerful tool having a huge vocabulary. Uh, This is what helped Malcolm X. Malcolm X became a powerful orator because he copied down the dictionary in prison. That this one thing made Malcolm X such a powerful communicator. And this is one of the things that You know, once you get your mind correct, and then you have the ability to powerfully express your concepts, your ideals. If you can get people to fully understand where you're coming from, that is amazing power. Uh, What my boy John Porter, one of the things, you know, this this is why we got together, because one of the things he used to do was learn 10 new words a day. And this is something you could do. Just learn, because for every 10 words, for every word you learn, you're going to learn three to 10 more just by learning one new word a day. So just take, you know, morning and like learn some new words, use these new words in your vocabulary, and you will be amazed at how differently people start to treat you. So this was a very pivotal thing that I got into. And this was uh, 1999 the foundation years when I got into that. So get yourself verbal advantage. Uh, Verbal communication is a lost art, Borwark empire. No, it's a problem. I just posted something on my money income uh, profit Facebook page talking about how young black men who come from affluent backgrounds tend to become poor. Like I'm going to give you a good example of how that didn't happen with Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie had upper middle class parents. And, you know, this is one of the reasons that he is so successful because he kept that background. He did not lower his standards. 
You know, he was a thinker. He was one of the first people to do text marketing, get people's phone numbers and text them. He, he was a brilliant guy. So he actually did better than his parents because he did not subscribe to hood culture or the new black culture. Sloppy. I mean, the, the language thing is a problem. The language thing is a problem with young people. Like, like I said, you know, I'm showing you this 20 year old girl making fifty thousand dollars a month because she knows how to speak. It's that big of a dip power. It, it, it's that big of a difference, man. It will change your life. Verbal advantage will make such a huge difference. All right. So these are the core books that I got into. Brian Tracy, Unlimited Power, Power of Your Son Coach's Mind, Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field. I listened to these over and over and over and over. And this built the mental foundation to allow more information. Because, see, the thing is, you've got people out here who, and here's some other stuff. Um, you want to check out Daniel Pink. And let's see. Cell is human. Uh, Daniel Pink has a lot of books. Daniel Pink was an attorney that turned into an author and speaker. So check him out. Uh, Daniel Pink is someone I came upon much later after I was out of the uh, storage business. I use a lot of his stuff for YouTube selling. Now, this is something else that Tony Robbins talked about. And I got into this for the Unlimited Power. Neuro linguistic programming. You want to get into books. You want to read about it because, you know, many people think this is this woo-woo stuff. I, I'm for here to tell you that this is very real. I use NLP in my Craigslist protocols. This is why they were so effective because I think to a degree, I taught myself a form of copywriting because I was writing these things and it was long form copy. Uh, this is one of the big things. Now, recently, I did, ran a test with some old ass. These ass 10, 15 years old. And I put them on Craigslist, and they still worked. 10, 15-year-old ads. They were all long-form copy. All these ads got responses. So once you learn NLP, it is worth it to go to the site, to read, about, read up about it, to actually invest some money into it and learning how to do it. Because... Um, it, it's crazy how effective it is. Learning in the opinion is learning the language of your own mind. And once again, mindset, power of your subconscious mind, this is where everything originates. This is where everything starts. And you got many people who you know, if, it, if I can't read this book and get an immediate benefit, I'm not going to read it. That's the wrong way of looking at it. Um, I studied this stuff for months before I got laid off at Powertel, which is now, which was Voice Stream, which now is T-Mobile. And this is what happened. I was able, by tapping into the power of my subconscious mind, I want you to think about this. I went back to my room in that boarding house and I was like scheme incorporated. I was actually thinking, but I also wrote everything down. It just wasn't up in my head because I got it out of my head. I wrote it down and I wrote that I am going to get a job that I don't have a reference for 
because I'm going to create my own reference, Mr. Patel. And I remember when they called, they only asked two questions. I was ready. You don't have practice my Indian accent. I was like all on that I was waiting for. And it was like, did he work for you? Yes, he did. Would you hire him again? Absolutely. That was it. So I used a lot of this stuff from Earl Nightingale, Power of Subconscious Mind, because I planted that seed in my head that I was going to get out of these low-income jobs. Went to rent a credit. Base income was 30, my base salary was 35 plus commission. I was able to live off of one job. And at 35, this was like, 1999, that's still more money than the average person makes today in 2019. Let me show you something. What percent? This is why I keep bringing this up. In 1999, Right? My base was 35K. $35,000 in 2019 is more money than 59% of Americans who make. Also, let's go ahead and um, 35K. adjusted for inflation. So this was 1999. Whoa. So when I was making $35,000 a year base income, because I had commission, that was the equivalent of $53,000 today. So, you know, even without the adjustment, so let's go to 53. So 1999, I was making more money than 76% of people in the country. This was the power of all of these things. This was the power of Dr. Joseph E. Murray, the power of your subconscious mind, Earl Nightingale, lead the field. See, I created my own mental university, which yielded tangible income results. Tangible. I got tangible income results. I was able to do in six weeks, what I could not do in almost three years. I got a better job. I moved out the boarding house into my own place. And it was like six months later, I ended up getting a car because I didn't have a car. This is the power of self-education. This is the power of taking your future seriously. This is what happens. Command of the English language is one of the very first things Earl and I got talked about in the lead the field. Uh, 48 laws of power. I didn't really get into the 48 laws of power until later. What's up, Roastmaster? Fit Betty. Thank you. Rugby cause man, I remember with that shiny steel storage background, you move really rapid. Self-education. Self-education is responsible for all of this. You got people, I know people who have gone and completed MBAs in all this other stuff, and they have not had my results. They had formal education, they've not had my results of a professional self-education. It's kind of crazy, but 
I'm I'm here. I'm proof to show, tell you how much this stuff works. So, I got into NLP with Tony Robbins because that's what he talked about. Anchors, you know. And the thing is, I read these books and I consumed them so often that they became embedded in my subconscious mind. The best practices, things to say, the things to do. And this is something that I got into on, was our YouTube, mind mapping. Notice that all of the majority of this is focusing on your mental. It's focusing on your mental, your mental environments. Yeah, I didn't get into the 48 Laws of Power because Earl Nightingale, Tony Robbins, Dr. Joseph E. Murray were how to do this stuff. The power of 48, the laws of 48, the 48 Laws of Power were this is what was done to you. So I was more in a mode of how to do this stuff, how to learn this stuff how to use this stuff in my life. And then one of the things that I did was started, you know, going into the social scientists, I started creating my own methods based upon the information that they gave me. I started to ramp up. I started to take the knowledge that was given to me and go further. Agent J. Poole, people talk about university too much. You have to be able to design your own education, achieve the results you're looking for. Nobody else can give you that. And this is something that I didn't understand because, you know, I was just down and out one day. And I, once again, I don't understand how I came across the power of your subconscious mind. But thank God I did. And that started this whole thing. And this is why, you know, honest to God, I am so hard on the whole tips because I know that they have a raggedy mental environment that is going to block blessings. You know, the whole thing, like when I, I was on the O'Shea store, you know, cause one guy, one of the haters the other day was like, you need to go on O'Shea and talk this stuff. I've been on O'Shea and I talk this stuff. And I actually said this on O'Shea's channel, forget that you're black. And this is a mental thing because if you look at everything through the lens of being a black person from a racist standpoint, you jacked. You're never going to get where you could get because mentally you have an anchor that is holding you back. I feel that being a black man, and this is you know part of my mental environment, is I, I feel that my ancestors were the Egyptians the people that built the pyramids, the people that had a high level of technological advancement. And I embody that by coming forward today, creating new products, creating and pushing that narrative. I don't have the whoa, wet handkerchief, we slave, we pull, we can't do anything for us. I don't have that mindset. I have the winner's mindset. I have the hero mindset that I can come out and achieve my goals. And the first level of success, because I remember when I pulled off this ridicate caper, as I called it back then, I was like, oh my God, it worked. And that was tangible proof that I could come up with a concept, put it on paper, execute, and get real tangible results. Because I was like, it worked. And then I leveraged the Renecrate to panel systems and I leveraged panel systems to business environments. I put myself on. There are many people who are waiting to be put on, but I put myself on through this self, this, this self-education process. This is why I am like so arrogant and this is why I talk to stuff and this is why 
I don't suffer hotel fools because I know what it takes to be successful in these United States of America. And it ain't begging, it ain't marching, it ain't whining. It is going out and creating your economics. Bring your economics, shield you from so many of woes in life is ridiculous. What's up, Maurice Sanderson? All right, stand the man. I never read the email. I heard a lot about it. Kim Robertson, most of Robert Greene's is self exploration, art of seduction, persuading, mastery, overcoming fear, 48 laws, how you have been incorporated into the biggest corporation. Maurice Anderson, do 500K. Then when I got into business environments, I used these same tactics. Because once again, if you're in outside sales, you should never be listening to talk radio. You should be listening to Earl Nightingale or some of this other stuff. Stan the Grand, I agree with Glenn. I love my people, but economics should be our focus. Too many of us have a poverty mindset. It, it, it's more insidious than that, man. When you allow yourself to believe that some random person, because they're racist, is going to impede your success, you have imprisoned yourself. This is why, you know, I like, you no, know, I deal with racists all the time on, you know, because I got this one post on money, income, and profit. And there are some racist people because they're just shook at the audacity of said, this needs to change. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. One guy even went to say, this is a white country founded by white people. It shouldn't be that way. And then we got into the exploration of that. Like, we mean how white people kill the Indians, how white people enslave the people. Would they have gotten these results if they hadn't done these atrocious things? And no one wants to talk about that because when they're like, all right, we bowed and bowed it. Yes, the white man, white country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandfather did all this. But when you go behind the curtain and you look at all of the nasty, atrocious stuff that was done to achieve these goals, they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to bring that up. Because someone's like, you know, these other countries, it's like this and like any other country other than America had the slave history process. And once again, I knew that Brazil had a similar interest. And Brazil is a poor country. Hotels asked for it, AJJ Pool. They would forever be uh, victims to the white man's out the way. Victim mentality is disgusting. Scott Blevin, I love what you had to say about the skills gap and not the wealth gap. These liberals are too afraid to admit that. So many lies and fabrication. This is what I was living. Working all of those low wage, low expectation jobs. I had a skill problem. That was my issue. I didn't have the skills. Through the leapfrogging of certain jobs, I learned sales and marketing. Some of the most critical skills that you can learn today. When I was in that boarding house, I had a skill set problem. I was very smart, and this was a part of a mental woe of mine. I was like, I'm really smart. I'm a good person. Why am I here? And the, the truth, and I learned, I, loved, I learned to love the truth. The truth was I didn't have any skills. That was the problem. And once I skilled myself up, my life changed. And then, you know, today we have a lot of misinformation that, you know, skill yourself up, you need to go to college. As, I, as I'm showing you in this stream, a personal education, a personal self-education can make you a millionaire. Personal self-education can make you a millionaire. First of all, the first process was to get the mental environment because my mental environment was jacked up. You know, I was brought up by a single mother. Along with that, I was a alpha male. 
that was that my mother tried to cert to short fuse to short circuit my biological programming. I had those mental issues. I had a friend, and we had a great conversation. He said, "One of the average reasons that the one of the main reasons that the average black man can't be successful is he's got ten years of figuring some stuff out, sorting some stuff out from the BS programming that's been given." where you, you compete with folks who don't have that burden. A decade is a long time. That Beth character is interesting. She has some same speech patterns as the Trump supporters. Oh, she's just, I, I blocked her. She's she She was just a clown. Roadmaster, stealing land, stealing lives of what the country was founded on. And that is the white man's legacy that they don't want to talk about because that's history. You can't go like, rah, 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 yeah, white people, we do all this other stuff. Oh, yeah, we did all this heinous stuff. My granddaddy was a mother. Can't talk about that. Chris McKinney, that's me. I'm, I'm smart, but no real world skills, but my charm and being likable. Chris McKinney, being likable and being charming can make you a millionaire. One of the things that many of us as black people have are these mental blocks. There is a channel called Charisma on Demand. Young kid, he's a millionaire. Being likable is a skill set. Kim Robson, true economic and true economics is empowerment. True Hotep is based in knowledge of ancients and comedic metaphysics. Truth is freedom. All right, Kim, I I'm gonna disagree with you. Most of the present day Hoteps are not coming off of based in the knowledge of ancients and chemic metaphysics. And I'm gonna tell you why. If they were truly studying that, because I've studied that, the, the Asianic black man, the Egyptians, you would be living that life. You wouldn't be talking about the white man. You would be too busy being successful, living life on your terms. The fully actualized black man is, is so powerful. You think it's an accident that all of these that all of these sports have these superhumans as, you know, Kevin Durant's LT. You think this is an accident? It's not an accident. Once you turn on your personal power and get out your, your head this stuff about the white man, you're gonna be so successful, you ain't gonna have time to think about the white man. Uh, the activism needs to be a movement. Well, there's a lot of people who don't have the uh, temperament for that, Scott Blevin. Thanks, Kim. Show up lifestyle. How do you balance reading and taking action on what you learn? I've recently realized I read a lot, but the problem is putting action what I've learned. I was going to address that. Good question. What you need to do is read the book and then apply it. When I was doing verbal advantage, I was learning this stuff and I brought it into my conversation. When I was reading the power of your subconscious mind, I used to have a process every day. I used to have a morning routine and a night routine where I would plan out my day. So you have to read and you also have to do concurrently. This is why, you know, this is how you read a book. First time you read it, the second time you read it with a pen, a highlighter, the third time you read it, you read it with index cards to take notes. So after three to five passes, you really get that book. Because most people, they're like into speed reading, like skim, skim, skim. Get this information as fast as possible, move on to the next thing, without really absorbing the knowledge. Roadmaster, being likable is a skill set. If you can walk, like, I'm going to tell you a story of this guy who became a real estate agent. 
very likable. He had a wide network of people who liked him. He became a real estate agent. He sold 60 houses his first year. The average real estate agent doesn't sell their one house or two houses their first year. And because he was such a likable person, he just walk in and it's like, hey, you know, folks, this because people liked him. He was able to turn that into cash. Being likable is a, is a skill set. Marvin's marketing, one, one thing uh, about skill sets, once you attain them, the book can take them from you. Exactly. David Lee, that's the real estate I heard about black empowerment. I mean, because, you know, if they were studying the true ancients and knew the history, like Beethoven, a musical genius, was a Moor, a black man, and they would start looking at all these examples of true black greatness, there would be no time for this white man talk. There would be no time for this reparations. The Moors enslaved the Europeans for a thousand years. There wouldn't be, you know, if they knew their history, they would act and walk like proud black people versus scared, handkerchief held, handkerchief headed slaves. If you say, well, you know, well, this is what happened in history, what are you doing about it? Gunji, it's funny how these whole tips are obsessed with whites, but don't talk about the Arab slave trade. Then the Arabs can't get very dark with after future. That's another rabbit hole. Nene Stone, I don't think the whole tips are focused on the white man anymore. I think they just don't have the skill sets to know how to start. Uh, I, I would say that's a valid argument because when you spent your life focused on an invisible man and you spent no time gathering skill sets, self-educating, uh, putting things together, you this was me. I was in that boarding house because I didn't have any skill sets and I didn't know where to start. So uh, that's a valid argument. Elijah James, to hell with the white man. I'm out here trying to get this money so I can prove the lives of me and my family. Ben Bliss, I was increasing my vocabulary. And my mom said I was trying to sound smart. Once again, this is the problem enterprising, smart, young black people have is the family legacy of low expectation and poor programming. Being liked is a skip. Rip. Nana, Nana Alma, if you're a person that people just, just, you show up and people like you, you should get in sales. You make a lot of money. David Lee, I don't believe in karma. You know, if karma was real, white people would walk around the streets like exploding, like pop, spontaneously combusting. Karma is something that people say because they don't have the power to extract the revenge they want on the people who hurt them. Don't get caught up in karma. This is one of the things I came to understand with the power of the subconscious mind. Right now, there's someone walking around the streets of America, happy, fat, and free, who has killed people. Where's the karma? You know, we see this in movies, but in real life, there are people who have gotten away with murder. Where's the karma? There ain't no karma. Louis DeSalle, the most powerful words in the world. Hello, how are you? I say that to total strangers when I want to buy their widgets at a low cost. AKWB, so I had my classmates would tell me I sound white for years. This is hood culture, the new black programming. Because, see, this is one of the things that some black folks can't make a difference. You know, they can't separate the difference. If white people do certain things, this is identified as white behavior. And since you want to be authentically black, you're not going to do white behavior. That's how this stupid stuff my classmates tell me I sounded white for years starts because we're not going to act like that, even though that behavior is not white behavior, it's success behavior. And this is a big problem with many young black people. It is a huge problem. Well, I don't want to sound like I'm white. I don't want to be trying to act like I'm white. I'm, I'm trying to. I don't want to try to do this stuff that white people do. You know, screw it if they're successful. So screw it if they get money. I'm black. 
Can't be messing around with that. And this is one of the reasons I let the black thing go. The black narrative of trying to remain authentically black will block so much progress, will block so many blessings. I dated this black chick who I was trying to get to go to these networking events with her coworkers, and because she was so racist, and I don't really care. I think black folks can be racist, harbor bad attitudes, and treat white people rudely. I think that we can do that. And she was racist. And she wouldn't go, and she's like, she felt that these white people were out to get her. Or this talk of the melaton, they want our melaton. I'm like, okay. Hmm. See, when you think that you personally are the prize, you can't really see the real money out there. Uh, I read it a long time ago, but I don't remember it. I don't think Think and Grow Rich impacted me like Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field, Tony Robbins. It didn't impact me the same way. Kim Robinson being funny is a skill set. Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy, Red Fox, Richard Pryor, multi-millionaires off of that skill set of being funny. You're absolutely correct. Ben Bliss. I did not know that about Abraham Lincoln. Kim Robbins, I was a corny person in elementary school until I started watching Comedy Central one summer practicing jokes, and I was making you crack up in less than three months. You taught yourself a skill set, Ganja. Nene Stone, facts. Karma isn't real. It's an idea that's a coping mechanism. Exactly. M. Jim, you were around indoctrinated black folks that were indoctrinated in hood and ghetto culture. And, you know, I've had this conversation with a lot of people that the progressive black people are must separate from the folks who are indoctrinated in hood culture. The two can't coexist because the progressive black folks who are doing successful things like increasing their vocabulary, getting the tech, getting to what's known as white folks behavior, the indoctrinated, the ghetto hotel people are going to hate on you and try to disrupt your success. You can't coexist with these people. Four types of knowledge. This guy been right about karma. Some of the dudes I had beef with are close to me in their status. My attitude is no longer bitterness. If those assholes can win, I should be able to. Exactly. Learned activity modeling and teaching. Yeah, David, because, you know, see, one of the things about when you get deep into these these books, because when I looked at the power of subconscious mind and I realized that the subconscious mind doesn't put morality on what you want. Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner created a business having sex with young chicks. He put that in his subconscious mind. He made that his reality. Hugh Hefner, 81 years old, banging 21 year olds. The mental. All right, Troy. I see racism against whites all up and down my TL that's barely get on. Yeah, because the thing is, many black folks think that it's perfectly cool to talk junk and to say unkind and very horrible things about white people and they go like, well, I'm black, I can't be racist. That's kind of like women with the, I can hit you, but you don't hit me thing. Scorpion life, that's funny. Star, displaying outright racism is silly. Keep your ideas and beliefs to yourself, getting where you can fit in, use the system to your advantage. When Eminem been as successful, he didn't act black. Eminem didn't really act black. He was part of that culture. For all intended purposes, Eminem is still a white man and acts like a white man.
Hugh Hefner was living the dream, pretty much. Show up lifestyle. They say you can't get rich thinking with your penis. Hugh Hefner, I know. Uh, I would have believed that because Hugh Hefner went through hell getting Playboy established. People were on him about that. Hurts to accept that, but yes, got to get away from hood culture. Yeah, because if you got black friends who are chastising you for using the Queen's English correctly, these folks are harmful to your success. I mean, I want you to think about this because the people who know you best wound you the deepest. They know where the, all the tender spots are. Yeah, the subconscious mind doesn't put any morality on what you want. Doesn't do it at all. Uh, they could grow rich black trust as stories of many black people who became millionaires during times of blatant in your face racism. Took away my excuses when I was 18. Yeah, because you know, anyone who's using the excuse of racism today is a sucker. A.G. Gaston became a multimillionaire during the most turbulent times against black folks. You get to your higher self of consciousness for these things to manifest, can't be thinking average? Absolutely not. Roadmaster, that's funny. I know, Stefan. Show up life still. In them attracted the white kids who hated their parents and got cheated on by their girlfriends and abused prescription drugs. Not acting very black in my opinion. Staying a man just because you come from the ghetto doesn't mean you have to talk in that ghetto, have to start to understand that hood culture will keep us poor. Because one of the things is, and this is why, you know, I say the things I say and I talk about the things I talk, is that if you're a black person who is steeped in hood culture, you can become successful in hood culture, starting something that appeals to people who have similar mindsets, but you are not going to become a billionaire. You're not going to have why. I mean, that hood culture is a tricky thing. Superstar customers. I made more money off my racist customers than my black customers. Wow. KP. Uh, we ain't going to talk about this stuff because, you know, I've put it out there several times. Name me one successful rich black person that's been shot by the police. Google it. You won't find any. Money changes everything. Money changes where you live. Like I said, I don't run the cops. I don't, the cops around here don't mess with people. Because these folks got money and there could be problems and consequences. Once again, if you feel that you're going to have an interaction with the, with the police and you're going to get shot, that is you and your low intellect. The reality is most black people stopped by cops are not shot. That is the reality. The numbers and the stats bear it out. Anybody here who's been... Anyone in the chat who's been stopped by a white cop, raise your hand. Are you dead? Most police traffic stops end up with the police officer going on about his way and the person in their car going on about their way. We've had some stunning examples. And this is something that I have debated for many years. You know, more white people are shot by the cops uh, there was a, a woman in Texas who got shot in the street by cops, a white woman. And I'm like, how come it is when a person of color gets shot by the cops, it hits the national news. But when white people are shot by the cops, it stays at the local level. Programming. Indoctrination. We want to keep these groups separate. So we're going to keep 
putting stuff out to keep them separate. Gene, it's still alive and didn't get the ticket as well. If I got a ticket, LOL. Facts, rich black folks do well with the police. The racism explanation could be a form of procrastination according to the war of art. Hmm. It plays into the narrative. Uh, Drake Chap, there's money in hood culture, blending music, merch, and hood radio stations is a billion dollar industry con controlled by probably two to three corporations. Oh, there's money in hood culture. I don't want it because it's money that it comes at a high cost. Gunji, raise his hand. Standing man, Glenn, you lived in ATL for a long time. It's hard to accept how negative black culture has become. It's crazy. We talk about getting money, but most of them in the hood don't even know how to hustle. Ain't that the truth? Show up life stuff. Hood culture is only successful in prison, which is how this hip cop culture keeps young blacks in invisible handcuffs with no chance for success. When you roughy, you run the cop star. Because your tax bracket dictate how money is distributed in your county, they know who's who, so they won't mess with you. I just don't have a problem with the cops. And if I need help from the cops, I'm calling them. Once again, you know, going through the self, you know, education, learning so much about how the mind works, how to control my mental environment. I, I, I will tell you some stuff that will literally blow your mind. One of the things that you have to do is direct your thinking. And if you're sitting around talking about reparations, bad things that were done to black folks, and you spend your precious mental energy on that, the opportunity cost could be your successful future. I know the narrative is black people are poor, stupid, oppressed by the white man, all lies. Absolutely. Because the thing is, and this is, this is why Trump is president. We've come across this juncture where white people realize they really weren't as better off as they thought they were. Jim Jim. Oh, yeah, you got to say death to the hood culture because one of the things, and I've, I've seen this on YouTube, I've seen people in these hangouts talk about stuff that wasn't true. There was this hangout with Anthony Brian Logan, and he was talking about how other black people were piling up on him for trying to better himself. And people in the comments uh, on the panel was like, I don't remember people acting like that. If you were a black person who was smart, and well-spoken, poor-minded, ghetto-ass black people messed with you. This is just facts. And people keep acting like this didn't happen. Drake Chap, cops mess with people in nice neighborhoods that look like they don't belong. I would say that's true. Reparations, once again, I want you to think about how much money thinking about getting reparations has put in your pocket versus thinking about how to get money has put in your pocket. Once again, you know, you know, because we got these Democratic presidential hopefuls who want to put reparations on the ticket and talk about it. It still ain't gonna happen. It still ain't gonna happen. They're pandering to black folks to get their vote. Show of lifestyle. This is to keep the separation going. Yeah. But I brought him up because there were other black folks who were saying that his experiences were invalid. And I'm like, wait a minute. I went through the same thing. I have a speech impediment. I wasn't allowed to use slang as, as a kid. And I remember why uh, one, one kid he was like, why don't you speak to like us? You know, we black. 
That is the danger. I mean, th this is one of the things that happens. This is one of the things that keeps people held back. Uh, this is one of the things, it's the mindset. I want you to look. <coughs> I was a poor little black kid, grew up in a single parent environment, and I've been able to transcend my upbringing. You know, once again, you know, this, this is a different channel. Um, if you put it in your mind to be successful, you will be successful. And you got to be very careful what you allow to enter your mind. All of this reparation talk and all of this talk of, you know, there's some people who like, America is such a bad place that I gotta move to another country. If you're that emotionally sensitive, I've traveled around the world. How they treat women in these Arab countries is disgusting. They going through something. American women, they ain't going through nothing compared to these women. I had one police chase in my former life after the military. I've been arrested for suspended license numerous times, stupid stuff. But I had more good experiences with cops. Good Lord, Ganji. They clown some black kid by saying Kwame's from a neighborhood where people say, hey, buddy. I thought it was funny back then, but now I think it's messed up. This is hood culture. Black folks, some black folks have a very weird relationship with reality. And, you know, I remember I was having this fight with this white dude on Facebook, and he's like, well, I hope you don't get shot. And I was like, the chances of you getting shot by the cops is much higher than me getting shot by the cops. He didn't like that. Uh, show up lifestyle, you're just gonna have to watch the stream over again. Because we, we're, you know, you're just gonna have to rewatch the stream. I break it down. Uh, this, this is how this is gonna go. And this is something that's funny. More Americans are moving to Mexico who are undocumented than folks moving here. I mean, that, that I read that article today, Stefan. It, it's kind of crazy. But at the end of the day, grooming and keeping your mental environment supreme, safe, and productive should be job number one. Because once again, I let all this black stuff go and this is one of the reasons that I was successful. And when I say black stuff, I'm talking about the negative black hood ghetto culture stuff. You got folks out here like, you know, I, I, I don't really allow the use of the word, the N word on here. And this is a big issue because you got black folks, you don't even know who like call you that. And I have actually had these conversations like, I'm not, don't call me that. And the dude got offended that I was offended that he used that terminology on me. He's like, but we black. I'm like, we ain't the same, bro. That is a dangerous, degrading word. Don't use that on me. And he was surprised that I was offended because he was steeped in ghetto and hood culture. Two thousand for one bedroom, man. I mean, AKWBs. This is reality. It ain't gonna happen. And your focus should be on building an economic enterprise to make your money, to support your families, to liberate your descendants. That's the play, because you know it should have happened, but it didn't. If you study history and you see how many jacked up things happen to groups of people. There are certain groups of people who don't exist anymore. 
Their complete tribe has been wiped out, complete Indian tribes, some African tribes wiped out by other Africans. These certain Egyptians are gone. You just start studying history. Because a, a big part of this is, you know, I have had certain stances on this channel for 10 years. And fortunately, as time has moved forward, it's gotten easier because I used to get a lot of flack about not using the N-word. Like people would debate me on using this word. And this is another bad thing that black people are bad about, having endless debates about things that don't make money. The use or not use of that word does not make you any money unless you're a rapper. And I have a thought about that. I don't even want to be called black no more, Israel. Yes, black, black society is bizarro land where dysfunction is celebrated and success is chastened. And that is, you know, that's one side of the culture. That's that ghetto hood culture, that keeping it real culture. The, the Nene Lakes culture, the uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta culture. I mean, once again, once you start to master your mental and to be careful what penetrates into your mental environment, and you, you keep yourself focused on the things you want. Uh, like. There's so many things. I don't know about that. You know, it, it's really weird because one of the things that happened with that, and I talked about this on another channel a long time ago, was what about all these white fans who want to sing these songs? This become, You can't put a fence around language. You can't put a fence around culture. But, you know, I'm getting ready to go. So what you guys should do is watch this video five or six times. At the beginning, I outline all of the books and stuff, the courses and impact and at what point. Because essentially, you get the power of subconscious mind, unlimited power, Earl Nightingale lead the field. And what this does is create a mental environment that is conducive to success. is conducive to success. It creates that environment and it opens up your mind to so many wonderful things. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next stream.